Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. Hello and welcome. Come with me as I take you to Cowra in central New South Wales to meet some interesting people on this week's Classic Restos. But it's a big thanks to Lachlan Engineering Services for making this trip happen. Cowra is a small town in the central west region of New South Wales and it's the largest population centre of the area with over 5,000 people enjoying the country air. Cities don't mean much to these people out here and it's easy to see why. There's no hustle or bustle and old mate stops to wave hello. Cowra is located approximately 310 metres above sea level and that's why there's no beach here but the town proudly graces the banks of the Lachlan River. Pending where you are of course, getting here from Sydney for example is easy at approximately 300 kilometres in distance and around 180 kilometres north of Canberra and the drive is known at times for its endless belt of yellow canola fields dropped like a blanket over the landscape. The first school was established in 1857. The first bridge over the Lachlan River was built in 1870. Gold was discovered at Mount Macdonald in the 1880s. The railhead from Sydney reached Cowra in 1886 and now the Cowra Railway Station sits timelessly. A once busy place that united people and allowed freight to enter the town, supplying local businesses and for distribution to outlining areas. And now the original rail side buildings still stand, displaying the typical design from the time. A view from on top of Billy Goat Hill will have you take in a panoramic example of the Cowra Township and surrounding region. Local government was granted here in 1888. The first telephone exchange was established in 1901. The town water supply was established in 1909. The gas works in 1912 and the town was supplied with electricity in 1924. You can enjoy the delightful Japanese gardens, Hologram Studio Bell and Bell Studio Kaura. And here at Lachlan Engineering Services. How you doing, Pete? Yeah, well, thanks, Fletch. How are you going? Good, mate. Good. Now, guys with classic cars in the area, the the classic car movement, what's it like around town? Oh, there's there's plenty of it happening around Cowra at the moment. It's all it's all rejuvenated of recent years. The last couple of years is sort of starting to get exciting again and people are getting out there, which is good to see. Yeah. That, that's so good, isn't it? When when the guys come in, what, what sort of stuff are they buying from you? Well, we typically see them at the end of their build when they're looking for the odder stuff, uh, fasteners and, and, and hoses. We're trying to join, join maybe a different engine than it was manufactured with so we see a lot of the odd bits and pieces. Yeah. Uh, power steering hose comes in you can put the fittings on the end of the, the new hose? Yeah quite often we modify to make silver solder up fittings and remanufacture as we need to to, to get them going here. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a good brassware section too. Yeah I like a lot of that odder stuff there's plenty of plenty of repcos and things out there that I um, do all the mainstream stuff so we concentrate on those odder bit of bits and pieces yeah. So Peter how long have you been set up here in Cowra? Uh, we've been going for 20 years now and, and just steadily building and building. We've, we've started off on our own, my wife and I, and now we've got a couple of staff and, and looking to expand again soon. So, 
Do you send bits and pieces out to, you know, further afield than Cowra? Yeah, we certainly do. We spend them right around the Central West and, and, um, and beyond sort of thing now. Yeah. It's, yeah. You, have you got a couple of cars yourself? Yeah, I, I like my old Holdens. Yeah, I'm a Holden man. I, I'll, uh, I've got to get a bit more time away from the shop, but I'll, I'll get there one day. You've got something in the build, haven't you? Yeah, an old HQ1 tunnel with an LSA going into it, so yeah, it'd be good. So there you go. So it's 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 the sleepers. It's it's the stuff we don't know about out here in the Central West. It means that I'm going to have to come back, Pete. Yeah, we'd love to see you again. Yep, Carrot always like to, to bring you back, Let yeah. All right, that's great. Mate, thanks again so much for your support and uh, making this trip happen. Um, it's the sort of place in here where you could spend many hours walking around and it's nice to know you're here for the classic car fraternity. But not only that, I mean, trucks, bikes, anything machinery orientated. Yeah, yeah that's all we concentrate. I love love getting people going and doing that odd stuff to, to get their car on the road or their truck or the tractor or whatever it might be. Yeah. Good on you, mate. Well done. All right, thanks, Letch. I love getting out into the country areas, whether it be Australia, New Zealand, the United States of America. And I think I get a little bit of that from my grandfather. He was born in 1896 and he was on the land until 1929 in Mudgee in the central west of New South Wales. And here, just outside of Cowra, the feeling inside to drive up a dirt road and find a very unassuming shed from the dirt road I guess it's that feeling that we all have when we drive through the country. What is inside the shed? Well, you're about to find out. I moved out here from the Southern Highlands uh, about 17 years ago, uh, out here to Cowra. Moved out here to give my boys a good life um, in the country. I live on 30 acres out here. We've just built everything that we needed out here. We've, we've built ourselves, um, a lot of it out of recycled materials. My shed just started off as a workshop um, on the other side and um, then I needed somewhere to put my eskies and my car and all the rest of it. So maybe about seven years ago, we decided to, to build this little cave part of the shed and, um, and actually having done that um, has made more of a family environment for the whole family to enjoy. It's not just my shed, it's our shed, it's our family shed. Um, for the kids to come up here and just get away and have their friends out here and play pool, play darts and listen to music and do whatever, so um, yeah, it's made for the family, not just for me. So we live 20, 24 k's from Cowra in a little isolated little village where we live. Um, we have our own sheep, you know, we've got to survive on rainwater, uh, which has been pretty hard in the, the drought the last couple of years. To be out here and not be hassled by neighbours and traffic and if you want to go somewhere it's just a nice easy drive in the country and, um, yeah, and just a beautiful, beautiful part of the world in my opinion where we live. The workshop outside, um, I'm a welder by trade, I used to have my own welding business. So I'll make anything, I'll build anything, I'll repair anything. I have nearly every tool out there to do anything, to build anything. There's welders, there's grinders, there's, there's oxy, there's MIG welders, TIG welders, stick welders. Yeah, I have a lot of gear out there um, to do everything that I need to do. Um, everything that needs to be maintained around the place, um, we're able to do. When I was a kid, I loved cars. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them and racing. Hand built with a stainless steel roof. It won the Monte Carlo Rally four times. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. In 71, this was the fastest four-door car in the world. Insurance? Shannon, of course. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools. 
sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. The workshop is one thing, but the best part I like about this whole place is when I bring people into my workshop and then there's this little door out in the corner and you take them through that door and just what satisfies me is seeing people's face that their jaw just hits the ground when they come through the door into my cave that I'm sitting in now. The stuff that's in this shed and obviously the number plates. So the number plate collection started um, with my work with Water New South Wales. I travel all over the state um, and I started finding number plates on the side of the road and that's sort of how the number plate collection started and now I have over a thousand number plates in the shed. Love doing stuff, tinkering around all the time, like my chairs um, that I have there made out of um, crankshafts and axles and there's one there that's made out of a, an axle and a diff, tractor seats on top. Build all these tables, um, build my eskies, uh, my chairs. Like I said, I build everything that that's in here that I have, I construct myself. Yeah, I have telephones, old telephones, right from a public phone to the other ones that, that sit there. Old cigarette tin collection, um, padlock collection from um, where I work. Cars, my little cars and yeah, my Peter Brock doors. Um, probably Peter Brock doors, about my favourite thing in this shed, I think. The Holden Guard and the Peter Brock door, um, I got off a fellow down in the village who actually won them in a raffle. And um, he, when I was building this man cave and he was up here helping and he said that um, I could have them. And um, I offered him money for it and he said no, that he'd be proud for me to just hang them in my shed. And um, as you can see, it's signed by um, all of the 97 um, Holden dealer team. My parents have been my absolute world ever since I was born. They have been the best parents I could have ever asked for. I'm lucky as hell to have them. I just I tell them every day how much how proud I am of them. Dad has always told me and my brother from a young age, you know, if you ever want your mates to take out to the pub or anything, you know, you can always bring them out here, you know, as long as they don't mess up our stuff, you know, we're quite happy to have them out here and we'll be playing pool, be listening to music, just having a great time, you know, playing darts, just jamming out on my guitar, playing for them and the feeling when you walk through this door and you see their faces light up and go, oh my God, like, what the hell is this, you know? Out the middle of nowhere, you know? And it's just the best feeling in the world to see these people just look at you and just go, man, you live such an awesome life. And I, I'm used to it. I have lived here my whole life, like I've said, and just every day you just walk in this shed and you go, yeah, I helped him build this. Rod, thanks for having me here today. Yep, no race flat. I love it. In the middle of nowhere, we find this, an oasis of number plates, pool tables, memorabilia, telephones, crankshafts. And I've got to say something, uh, your son Alex, he's a, he's a special guy, right? He's a special kid. Yeah, he's a good kid. Yeah, we love him. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he, he thinks the world of you guys. Yeah. We have a HG here in front of us. Do you want to just <laughs> quickly tell us about this? Yeah, so I bought this car uh, maybe 20 years ago and um, yeah, it was my first, well, not really my first resto, but my first um, real restoration that I ever did on a car. It has a 383 uh, bow tie motor in it, um, Muncie four speed, um, nine inch diff. The interior's all been done to a, um, a Premier standard. Mm. I love, um, the, love, the, the, love the black, it's very cool. 
yeah, all the, the door trims and stuff, um, trying to source all the stainless steel mm. for the door trims. Um, took me on an adventure nearly all around Australia just trying to find um, a good set of stainless to make the door trims. I like what you've done under the hood too. Uh, you've hidden the wiring. It's very clean under there, Rod. Yep. Um, so all the ignition is underneath the dash, the battery's in the boot, um, the windscreen washer bottle's in the boot. Um, all, the, all the wiring goes through the guards, uh, through the front. Does the dirt road out front annoy you at all when you've got clean cars? Not really. Mm. Um, well, so you doesn't worry about anything? There's nothing to worry about out here. <laughs> And if you have got a worry, you tell the bloke over the road, he tells the whole town it's all out in the open, then you've got no, no worries. worries, it's all out in the open. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you'll be amazed at um, how clean that engine bay stays. Mm. Um, there's the, the pans in the floor, in the, the front of the engine bay, and it does, it's remarkable. People say to me, you know, how has this car survived out here mm. for the last 20 years? Yeah. Um, and I used to drive it to work every single day. Okay, we have a VX Commodore. Now, Rod, some guys that are let down with carbies, they get rid of those and go fuel injected. This here, you've gone the other way around. You've taken the fuel injection off and put the carby on. What, what's, what's going on here? So this is my son um, Max's idea. Um, he's just had a mate that, that um, has passed away and, and they had an idea of um, turboing a V6 um, 3.8 litre Commodore and he came to me last weekend and said dad I need to weld up all this throttle body we're going to weld this holly on the top of it and I'm like mate I don't know whether that's really going to work and he's like it'll work dad it'll work and two days later and we have a V6 3.8 litre Commodore with a 650 holly on it and it goes. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's about to be turbo. It's By the end of this weekend, it'll have a turbo on it. And um, yeah. <laughs> the guys are genius. Out into the paddock, we've got a HT Ute. Oh, this is nice, Rod. <laughs> oh, done, this is my pride and joy, this one. a beautiful job on this one, <laughs> mate, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, we got this one um, what, nine years ago now. Um, out of a paddock out at Forbes. Um, it had no wheels on it. We, Buried in red dirt, uh, the whole chassis, yeah. petrol tank, everything's rusted out. And yeah. We told old mate that we wanted it as a paddock basher for the kids, and um, he told me it would never go again. And um, still the same motor, nine years later, and we had it going within two days. We've got the trusty 186 going on here. We've got a couple of Stratos bucket seats bolted in. We've got the sport steering wheel. We've got the patina look on the paint. You've got everything here with this rod. Yeah, we do, Fletch. Um, we haven't got a hole cut in the floor for the for the um, for the shifter through the floor. <laughs> um, I had to weld rails underneath to be able to have something to bolt the seats to. Um, got a petrol tank underneath the bonnet uh, because there's no petrol tank left. <laughs> <laughs> People that come out here and see our place, just, they love it. You know, they love, they love the isolation that we have and it's not a hard thing to take. Like, once you step out of the city and come out, out to the country, um, yeah, you'll never go back. It's, it's beautiful, you know. People say you don't have people around you and all the rest of it, but you don't need people around you to, to live. And when you've got family, that all that really matters to, to me and um, yeah and this is why I, I do what I do and why I build these places is for my family to enjoy. Are you a motoring enthusiast? Does your current insurer understand your passion? At Shannon's we're motoring enthusiasts just like you. We understand the passion you have for your special car or bike. But did you know that Shannon's will also ensure your daily drive, the car you drive every day? So if you're a motoring enthusiast, you've got to be with Shannon's. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. 
And if you own a classic, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And if you are yet to discover the Shannon's Club, there is many hours of entertainment there awaiting you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Now on today's show, you're about to see a fully customised 1964 EH panel van that'll blow your mind. This thing has extended doors for goodness sake. And to tell us more, here's Barry. This van here is, is quite special to me. Um, originally I set out to do a restoration and uh, planned it all out. It didn't really, um, didn't really suit my needs, so I've modified it, um, fitted a back seat to it, a station wagon back seat. So completely original fitment in the back seat area. Um, made the, the, the doors longer, um, just for better glass area and access. Um, it's a totally practical car. It's comfortable with its modern seating, which is trimmed in a, an original fashion. Um, also done a one-piece tailgate to make it a little bit more practical for, for loading goods into. Uh, initially, when I had it first rebuilt, my, uh, my wife used to use it for family daycare. Uh, the kids, the kids loved it. Um, yeah, it's just a, a nice, practical, comfortable car to drive. Yeah, well, everything is done in an original fashion. Um, so if someone doesn't know anything about the car, they'd look at it and they'd think it was original. That was the idea behind it. Um, so the the trim level is special. The seating is more modern. It's early Commodore seats. They're more comfortable, but they're trimmed in a in a, in a seating as, as they would in the original car, virtually. Yeah. Oh, the radio was uh, an iPod uh, style radio. Um, when they first came out, the, the, the fascias were, were fairly ugly, to be honest. Um, but I found a reproduction fascia and put the original knobs on it. So um, the whole thing looks, looks all, virtually like it did in the, in the day, but with the advantage that you've got an iPod. Uh, the hood lining I made, um, they're generally just a short roof lining that only finishes with the, um, at, at the height of the window. Um, made it all. You know, Took a while to do, but yeah, it, it's perfect. The engine's a, um, a 186 and it's been balanced. It's got a, a little cam and a dual barrel carby and headers just to wake it up a little bit. Um, it's, it's very fuel efficient and it, it goes quite well for what it is. Yeah, a lot of people mistake these for, for EJs because of the tail lights. That's, that's all they sort of know about the EH, a lot of people. Um, but this, that's the way they were, just for cost, cost factor, I, I guess. Um, they're working with the body contours, virtually, yes. The suspension on this is, is quite basic, um, just your HR front end conversion, the disc brakes, it's got the HR disc brakes. Um, the only thing that I have done is put HQ axles on it, which gives me a little bit more drop in the ride height. Yeah, well, the tailgate was done just to, to make, more, make it more practical to, um, to, to load into, um, just so you don't have to lean into it. Plus it just gave it that little extra custom piece that people wow over. Well the back seat has all just been taken out of a station wagon. Um, the floors are actually the same in, in all models. Um, I only had to take out some of the load floor to be able to fit the station wagon seat. But it all works as the station wagon. You can still sleep in it, you can still sit in it. It just makes it more practical. Barry, there is so much spotlight emphasis on the EH Holden. Uh, what an, an incredibly popular model. It is. They are very popular. Um, it's the styling. It's it's a whole range of things. They're simplistic. I love their lines. Exactly. The way they drive. But in this situation here, from with what you've done from well, once was a commercial vehicle, you've turned this into a, a beautiful motor car. Yeah. Thank you. The sign writing on the side, time capsule stuff, right? Yeah. Um, it was just something that, that I designed over a, over a few years um, and I got a, an, old, an old retired sign writer to do it for me. We look at this as a, the commercial vehicle. Um, it, it's, I'm amazed it's even here. These cars were trashed. They were brickies, builders. So I, I guess if, if, a, if a bakery owned one, at least they, they weren't getting that knocked around. But uh, primarily these cars really got a hard time, didn't they? Yes, they did. Um, the utes more so, I think. Um, they weren't sheltered by the weather like the vans were. Now, Barry, the, the colour of the car, what, what is the actual colour? Well, it's an FBEK colour. It's called Iris. It's a colour that I've seen many years ago and I vowed to, to use it on a car and I'd virtually forgotten about it until I was getting very close to painting this car. It's that light 
pastel colour from the 50s. Beautiful. Mm. There was a... There was a few of them. It was like a, almost like a, a, a salmon colour, yeah. um, the uh, duck egg blue. Mm. Um, th- there was just a few of those mm. colours that, you know, the light green. Yeah. Boy, such period correctness. Mm. The subtlety of the violet um, works very well with it. Yeah. And uh, when we went into the likes of the FC where the two-tone came about, separated with the stainless trim, mm. boy, what a... What what a classy era we were looking at back then. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's hard to describe. It's just just a beautiful thing. Um, now, with what you've done with the car, there's little things I'm noticing too. Uh, some NASCAR accessories, uh, the the knuckle plates behind the uh, the door openers on the on the door, uh, even to your um, your key steering lock. Yes, um, all these sort of things is just back to period accessories of the day. Um, just to give it that nostalgic feel. Barry, this is a place that, again, we could spend more time at, a trip here to Cowra, and it's guys like this uh, that we, we don't often see uh, in the in the central west of New, in central New South Wales, central western New South Wales, regional areas all over Australia for that matter. Um, it's great to have opportunity to come out and interview people just like yourself, Barry. Thanks, Fletch. That's okay, you're more than welcome, and, uh, and Cowra and... Uh, outlining areas is is definitely a place that we will return to so mate thank you very much for your time showcasing one of his cars he's got some more stuff here but we'll keep that for another day good on you barry thanks fletch you're welcome cheers mate well i hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of classic restos filmed in cowra new south wales rod and his lovely family and their incredible man cave and just a snippet of one vehicle belonging to barry his sensational eh panel van now on next week's show we're going to be featuring another vehicle enthusiast from cowra as well so until then no matter where you're watching classic restos from please ride and drive safe I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.